Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the Nerd Herd Comic Book Club. Your number one stop for stellar reviews of volumes, arcs or stories that us or yourselves choose. You can find us live every Wednesday on YouTube, Facebook and Twitch and the replay on all podcast networks. Take a seat, get yourselves and your opinions ready as it's time to join the herd. But first, please put your hands together for your hosts, Shane, Phil, and Scott, as they kick off this week's discussion. Hello, <laughs> welcome to the Nerd Herd Comic Book Club. We are a club that like to get together every week and talk about a volume, and an arc, or a story that either ourselves or you have chosen. Uh, my name is Scott. And I'm joined by my good friends. One of them is slightly glitchy right now. But first up, we've got Shane. Ahoy, hoy. And we've got Phil. And we'll just say hi on his behalf at the moment. He was fine, <laughs> literally, until we went live. And then <laughs> it's got a bit peat on. But we'll be professional, as always. And we will look past it. And we will uh, go through this. And he's gone. Okay, so today we are reading Skyward, Volume 2, here there be dragonflies uh written by joe henderson art by lee garbert uh colored by antonio fabella and lettered by simon boland uh this book uh as it's still sequels month uh this book covers issues six to ten of the skywood series it's just 15 issues overall and uh let's have a quick hello to see who we've got in so far uh, we've got Lee. Howdy ho. Hello. And we have Martin as well. Even all. Uh, we can see that there are more of you in, uh, in and watching, so do make sure to say hi as well. Right. Before we get chatting, I need to give you a quick synopsis. So, what happened in this book? So, volume one, we saw that Willa became a, a fugitive. And then uh, you kind of we kind of see that she leaves Chicago and goes on the run. Um she then ends up taking refuge uh, with some low gravity farmers uh, and then stumbles across uh, a plot that they have to attack the city uh, and just ransack it all. And on top of that, there are gigantic man eating bugs running amok as well. Maybe I should have started with that. But that's pretty <laughs> much the synopsis. Um, that is Skyward Volume 2 in the smallest nutshell ever. Um, so uh, we will ask Shane to kick us off with his thoughts, please. Shane? I bloody love this. I absolutely <laughs> adored everything about this. Um, the main character, Willa, um, she just has such a great arc throughout the yeah. first issue, the first volume, and through this one as well. Like, just when you think she's already become the character that she's going to be for the rest of the book she then grows and evolves some more and becomes even more likable if as if that was even possible because she's never done anything that's not likable yeah i loved it and the art i mean um i kind of got a bit of a crush on lee garbert's art i'm not gonna lie <laughs> and in this book his faces bodies backgrounds creatures like just you, is, is you this said, you said he drew you a really know. handsome fella. He drew a really handsome guy, good looking guy, muscular, gorgeous looking fella, and this Lucas. is why you love it. Yeah, Lucas, that's the one. Yeah. Um, yeah, Shane, you said earlier that um, before we went live that uh, you you saw had a bit of a Dan Mora vibe going on. In yes. The yeah, especially with Luca. Like when he shows up for the first time and you see his face, it was very, very Dan Mora. Yeah. Like. You'll see when we get to my page pick kind of what like I mean. Scratchy lined beard and uh, yeah, also the, like I, I the, it, the, yeah. the face is sort of it, like it's beautifully done, but like the eyes are closed, but they're not, if that makes sense. Like it looks like they don't have eyes. Do, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like Brock from Pokemon, like he's, <laughs> they're, they're just like this. But yeah, I can't explain it. I was just getting a massive Dan Mora vibe. Why am I jealous of Shane like gushing over this guy Luca or Lucas or whatever his name is? Are you, are you jealous of Lucas because Shane isn't gushing over you, or <laughs> or do you want someone in the book to gush over? <laughs> yeah, a bit of both. It's just like you know, just pay me a compliment sometimes. I have a beard too, a bit scratchy looking some days. 
<laughs> you look lovely, and we tell you this all the time. Okay? I know, I know. You look I'm complex. Stunning. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, to to kind of uh, add some weight to how good this story is, and Martin kind of agrees with you, uh, Shane. Blue Sonic said he got carried away this week, and he read all fifteen issues. Now, no spoilers. Yeah, no spoilers, please. Um, now, th- third week in a row, I have the book. Um, instead of reading it digitally, so ooh, this is the collection of all fifteen issues, uh, and it's lovely. And Phil has it too. Look at that; it's amazing. Um, it's so left out. So yeah, so you can see that I got the bookmark there. I have stopped at issue ten uh, at the end of that because you know I want to be unbiased and I don't want to have me reading further, you know, lead any opinions on this. And yeah, like it's so hard not to because it's such a quick story and you can just fly through it. Uh, pun, intended. pun intended. Yeah. Perfect, yeah. <laughs> uh, go Phil. In fear of bringing the tone down, Shane couldn't own this book because I mean with Lucas, because he loves him so much, I mean you'd be having sticky pages. At least with a tablet you can just you can just wipe it. You know, that's okay. You just wipe it off. Sorry. <sighs> Anyway, stand professional. It's a yeah. family show. <laughs> Let's say hi to Andy. Evening, nerds. Some calm in this wild Wednesday. Glad we can oh, wrong you place know. for you. To, yeah, yeah, wrong time for it's, that. It's, it's wild now, Jesus. But, <laughs> and uh, Lee is also stroking Phil's ego. Phil, you are a glorious human. Oh, thank you. Thank glorious. You. That's, a, that's a good word. Uh, that's it. One compliment per show for Phil, yeah, otherwise done. he'll get too above his station. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Phil, well, what's your general vibe of the book? Uh, to be fair, I have read the story before, and I honestly can't remember how it ended. Um, with this volume, it's the similarities between last week's Once in the Future and the fact that it doesn't feel like a filler, but again, it's it's taking a different direction. Yeah, I feel what I'm trying to say. Hell of a different direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the whole introduction of these bugs and the giant kind of uh, was it mosquitoes were the evil were the bad ones and yeah they're farming these bugs. It just became a whole different story for a while. But mm. then you obviously when you get to the end of this volume, you realise that actually it's just adding a new kind of dynamic, a new kind of threat, something they need to worry about back in Chicago whilst they're still going to Kansas to, to cure yeah. or reinstate or whatever it is they're going to do with gravity. So it adds more to the overall story and make the stakes higher, which is really good. But it does, for a little portion in the middle of this volume, feel like it's just almost filler, but maybe not as much as say Once in the Future was last week. Yeah, I think I think it's the kind of thing where you know we still have the some little bits what made volume volume one good. You know, it was like you know Willa's dad died, but handed Willa the book uh, that he was writing all his notes in. You have the um, kind of reappearance of Barrow so it, these kind of little things are still kind of um, you know trickled in in this story but I, I know what you mean that you know we have we do have a totally different story because volume one was in a city and it was just focusing on you know we don't have gravity and then you have the cool thing with the rainstorm as well but now you've got this now we're in a totally different environment you're in a jungle you have gigantic bugs because there is less gravity and it's a totally different uh, thing to play on for, for Joe it Anderson. Went, yeah, it felt more fantasy, this volume. Like, the first mm. volume felt sci-fi. This one felt fantasy because of the giant bugs, you know, the dragonflies and the light... What are the light ones called? Oh, my fireflies. God, I'm flaking. Fireflies. Yeah. How, such a basic word, I couldn't even think of it. <laughs> yeah, but it feels like... It feels more fantasy, doesn't it? Like, the way they're riding them, like, as if... You're, yeah. you know you're riding a dragon with your spear yeah. and you're like chopping heads off with your sword very very fantasy-esque yeah um so uh leah said i wasn't too sold on volume one but i definitely preferred this one uh it took a turn and the new dynamic was very welcome awesome and shane we might have a bit of uh kindness coming your way chris has jumped in from off my shelf hello i was planning on offloading my deluxe hardback shane not because i dislike it it's just uh, i can't see me rereading it so i can send you mine if you want it i'd rather it go to a good home where it's loved it will be loved oh that's for sure <laughs> lucas in it will be jesus yeah. so one of the pages will be very very loved <laughs> <laughs> two technically because i mean they... <laughs> yeah anyway yeah, what, what 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 do you think of the art then? You know, the what's your general thing of the art? The art's lovely. I think yeah. it, I think um, it is quite scratchy and quite uh, I won't say incomplete, but it's 
purposeful in terms of it's obviously just his style but i think if you if you had something that was too clean cut it wouldn't really work out and there are a lot of images too where when they were outside you kind of see like the skies and the sun rays and the kind of like wildlife whatever it just looked really cool and again i, I think willa is a really cool chick i she think is. she looks she looks brilliant she looks like i want to like i want to be her friend you know yeah and uh again even is it luca or lucas lucas. Wasn't lucas and he was he was a very handsome chap um and to be fair, every character was like, there was no ugly characters. Um, what I will say though, and it's it's similar to the first volume because I actually rewatched this back our show from last year. I watched it back. That um, the villain Baru, yeah, again, it's just he's just a normal bloke. Didn't look very villainous. I think Dean touched on that last time, and it made sense. He doesn't look dynasty. very villainous. Yeah, yeah. I, I get it, but I just feel like. You could add a little bit more onto him. I don't know what, but just yeah. something. No, he's scarier just being a man in a suit who has got this control where he can just turn the trains off. You know, he can just, he has that much control, he could just turn the trains off. He can turn the magnetic boots off. You know, he, he has the power and he's just a guy. But he looks like a bit of a wimp as well. You <laughs> but know. that's the, that, but, but men in power do. They are, you know, they are weak men. They just have accumulated power he wouldn't have any of this power if gravity was still on he would just be some boring no-named businessman that no one would pay attention to but he'd managed to get to where he is thanks to the gravity turning off and him having the technology luckily a little bit too conveniently yeah well right we, as gravity turned off we we do kind of learn this in this story don't we because you know uh barrow owns the farms that we see that you know willa ends up going to and there was a kind of little bit of a flashback, wasn't there? And Lucas was trying to explain that they had already installed stuff ready for when the gravity got turned off. So mm -hmm. uh, so Barrow definitely knew what was going on. It wasn't a surprise. So I'm looking forward to seeing where that goes. And hopefully it better unfold because there's no more. It's just 15 issues and that's it. If if there are any like loose ends, I'm not going to be best pleased, to be honest. Yeah, I hope on like the final page of the final issue, he doesn't just like pull out like his pager and press one button and gravity comes back on. And he's like, uh. yeah. <laughs> like yeah, I built a machine 10 years ago <laughs> and I could just press it on and off whenever yeah. I feel like well, it. He's got a switch for everything else, so I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> but this is the thing about this volume too, because obviously we hit, we've seen the whole the bug thing they're farming bug meat to eat essentially oh, yeah, yeah. and no one knew how did no one know they were yeah. not eating like steak <laughs> how yeah. do you not know? exactly how do you not know but it's just the, the, they're introducing all the different things then obviously the i don't want to give a spoiler the last kind of page you see a character appear which we are assuming is will his mother Mama, yeah. i just feels like you got one more arc to go you started to try and do another kind of branch out in the world a little bit now you have to rein it back in for the end and like yeah. you're saying scott you don't want to have loose ends at the end of this story because it's it that's it done now unless it's open for interpretation you know where you have your own kind of thinking of how these things end exactly but i'm quite black and white i want to see a definite end no loose ends just just give me it and i'm worried i won't say i worry i can i know but kind of forget but um yeah, that they, they don't tie everything up. Yeah, like like obviously, I don't mind. You know, some stories do it well where they just end, but there are a few things left unanswered. But it it leaves you thinking a bit, and those are good. But I just you know, if they do it well, then they do it well. But we're not here to talk about that. That's mm. if we ever talk about volume three. Um, the art, you know, the art in this is still consistent compared to. The last volume and you know it's consistent with this whole story that we've read but i just love the the change um in in scenery you know we all just you know, volume one we just had the city blocks and buildings and you know there was a lot of grays and blues wasn't there it was just building and sky building and sky and um but this we've had so much more you know we've had all the jungle and that kind of environment and those the backgrounds and the panels looked amazing and really vibrant in some places and then we've got the, the giant bugs and we've got the farm and a lot of new characters and yeah it was it was really cool and i think the art has definitely gone up a notch compared to compared to the first volume 
yeah, uh, uh, again, I like the contrast, but that's very different. Mm. Um, I do recall one of the one of one of the pages in volume one was like the space one where everything was floating into space. So they they just played around in a different way this time around. And like I say, they yeah. if you're going to introduce these bugs that obviously live in the woods, you're going to have to really um, make us believe it by by drawing mm. some wonderful wonderful pages of bugs in the woods and. Um, I know your page, Scott, that you picked is actually one that I picked as well, but I've seen that you've done it first <laughs> before me. we it again. Yeah. Uh, I'll go yeah. last then. No. So yeah, I had to pick something something different, but it's still, I mean, the art for it was fantastic. I loved it. Yeah, what yeah. I love most about the art is the, the gravity-defying things, like Willow's hair is never the same in any yeah. panel, because yeah. it always has to float one way or the other. Like, it's a clever way of doing it like when you watch you know when you watch shows and they're meant to be in space so all the men will have shaved heads and all the women will have really tight ponytails or top knots so that there's no they don't have to cgi the hair floating and they, yeah. they did that in this book like there were there were some women on the farm who had shaved heads so that they the hair wasn't floating and the men had like top knots like so they didn't have to draw their hair waving around but it's it made willa stand out so much more every time you saw her her hair was floating that way and this way and it just it looked stunning every time she looked like one of those windswept like models from the hair adverts didn't she (laughs) yeah it was awesome yeah you know and it's that kind of you know it's just those little bits of thought that i just love when it came to designing this whole story you know visually like don't forget we have to have every character having either short hair you know for the guys so it's just up a bit or really floaty, you know, airy hair uh, for the women if, if it's long. And I thought, yeah, it's brilliant. And crumbs when they eat mm. and, like, liquid yeah. bubbles when Bottles. they drink. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's awesome. fantastic. It's awesome. Uh, so Liam agrees with you, Shane, when it comes to Barrow. It's much scarier that this, uh, this is just a normal guy and he has that sort of power and will abuse it when it suits him. It is, you know, it's just, you you're not, you're not, you can't tell when it's going to happen. And uh, we've got a new person coming in. We've got Beth. Hi, Beth. Thank you for joining. She is from the Twist and Turn graphic novel team. Uh, she is actually um, trying to promote a new independent comic uh, called Twist and Turn. It's, um, what was it about? It's uh, about the TT races in okay. the Isle of Man. And there's a bit of a mythological twist in there. So if it does uh, tickle your fancy, then go and just search for Twist and Turn on Instagram and you should find it there um, yes um, yeah and you know the, the the best thing as well you know carrying on from that uh, thought about all the designs and the creativity of how the art and things like that should be it's um, because of the, 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 the details and the bugs and how massive they were and it's just I just love it just, you just change one little thing all they've done is change gravity and because of that, this whole thing has changed, and they, we now have mass, massive bugs floating around and just killing people. And I think it's just, you know, and to be able to make a story on that is amazing. I like the way as well they're able to um, obviously use the bugs to their advantage in terms of they can like, train them to be their own like horses type of thing. You know, it's a shame. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And any ones they do kill they use their wings as well so it's a good way to get another dynamic they're added to the story that so I'm, willow did use the wings and i'm assuming she will again in, in the last one or at least the hopefully the, the army that's heading towards chicago will and yeah, yeah. Cool. okay let's get to our pages shall we yeah cool all right we'll we'll go in order uh shane will go for you first all right ah uh, surprise surprise <laughs> What oh, what other page was I gonna pick? But Lucas's the, introduction, the one where he's topless. Uh... <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I went for this one. I just, I just love his cheesy grin and his beautiful face and the body yeah. armor. I just think it was awesome. You know, like just the way he saves Willa from the the dragonfly, and it was just a great introduction to him because you have no idea. I mean, it's kind of a little bit obvious if you read stories and you understand how a story is usually written that he's not going to be this prince, this knight in shining armor. But it was still nice to see him be kind of a good guy at the beginning, and I really enjoyed it. And I was getting a Klaus vibe from him as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I was too. I closed yeah. him as another handsome uh, guy. So yeah. that's another touch of Dan Mora there. 
Yeah, I think that's yeah. why that's why I right. was getting the Dan Mora vibe because of that. Right. Cool. Nice. Uh, yeah, it was a fantastic introduction for him, and I just love the little bits of um, just the light behind his head, just that little bit of nice glow behind him, and it's just yeah, yeah it's just nice. It just it kind of makes you feel like oh, this guy's safe and nice, and uh, and then the tables turn, and we'll talk about that <laughs> later. Uh, Phil, we'll go over to yours. Uh, again, I just wanted to. Uh, I don't know what it is. This picture stood out for me. Obviously, the, the one I picked, we all kind of picked, but Scott got there first. So, this is my second pick. I mean, you've got um, uh, damaged, uh, legless cow um, carcasses floating in, in the sky with, like, you know, I'm assuming it's blood or else, like, bits of meat, you know, like a bit of top roast floating about there in the air. <laughs> um, and also the fear in this guy's face getting eaten by a dragonfly, which looked really cool. Yeah. It's just. Just a lot of this kind of um, imagery, I just think is, I just think looks fantastic. Again, it's like we mentioned before, all the stuff floating in the air. Of course, it's going to be. It's not going to be uh, settled. And yeah, I like it. I like the way it's like. I don't have if I'm explaining this right. So you have him in the foreground, and obviously, as we follow the dragon fly up in the sky, yeah. everything's getting further away. You know, I'm trying to say that kind of like the perspective. Uh, yeah, that's the one. Yeah. It's, it's, cool. it's cool and I like I look at this and I just think you know how will it be left like when the dragonflies go like what's going to be left just floating around in this in this little barn that you've got here uh, yeah and seeing this page just made me think of the aftermath yeah but it's, it's a, a shame like they'll, they'll, they'll never taste like sirloin steak again it's, 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 it's so bad <laughs> well I suppose if they're eating the cows and you're eating them it's pretty close isn't it uh, that's, how it works. that's how it works yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, this is a page that I picked but it's actually the page that we all picked uh, here it is this is uh, the very last page of issue 6 uh, the first issue in this volume and it's just awesome it's just uh, man gets kidnapped by dragonflies and Willa just kind of shoots herself out of this train kind of saber but it's just that kind of like superhero flight pose isn't it and it's just mm -hmm. in the background and you've got um you know just the light in the background there just really making it focus on her and the dragonflies floating around it's just a fantastic page the detail is amazing you know, like all the tree bark and again on the dragonflies it's just mm -hmm. a stunning page yeah i love the wings on the dragonflies in the foreground yeah. like the, the the blur on their wings to show yeah. the movement i thought was fantastic yeah, because you can just so you subtle, can see it's through them. Yeah. yeah, it's so cool. But again, even this scene with the fact that that Willa. This is why I really like Willa because she obviously has this is this is the guy who's the daughter's on the train, and she obviously sees parallels between her and her own father. So she just wants to get out there uh, and save him, and not no real plan. So she just kind of jumps out and saves him. It's cool. When I started the book, I did think that was Willa and her dad. I thought I was reading a flashback at first. <laughs> See. Yeah, me too, actually. Yeah, yeah I, I thought it was a flashback. And then when we see her, she's in the back of the train, I'm like, okay, it's not a flashback. Whoops. <laughs> yeah. Uh, interesting um, thought from Chris. Uh, he says, I can't be the only one that was frustrated uh, by the bug life utterly evolving in size in 20 years. It took me it took me out a bit, to be honest. Felt a stretch too far when they tried so hard to ground the reality of the story. Um I yeah, I agree. Yeah. I did think it was a little bit weird. I actually had to go back and reread it. That's that that portion before we went live because I just wanted to make certain I, I got the right justification of why they did it. So there's yeah. no gravity, so they just can enlarge themselves the size of that. I, but I, the thing I, is, I don't think it was like I don't think it was like a tiny bug making themselves bigger. Yes. Yeah. Is, is just pretty big the, babies to have though do you want to, do you want to say it yeah, eventually they're going to have to yeah, get bigger just, yeah each baby's going to get bigger but, they, they but I'm pretty sure they. bugs have an exoskeleton and they like they breathe through their skin so they can't get that big because oxygen is still really small so they would suffocate I'm pretty sure the reason bugs don't get that big is that they physically can't they biologically can't because they would die but I mean, I understand this is a fantasy world, so I just yeah. I overlooked it. Although I did, when the guy got ripped out of the train, I kind of thought because you just kind of see like a tentacle sort of thing. I was like, oh, maybe it's jellyfish because like jellyfish can travel in zero gravity. So I was like, maybe jellyfish have like left the water and are just like traveling the world, <laughs> killing people. <laughs> yeah, 
yeah Jeez, yeah that's, that's, a, that's a good point that's a good point so thank you thank you chris for that um i didn't like i didn't think about it to be honest i just i just went along with it and i was like yeah right let's go yeah, I, don't yeah. Mind. I was it's too fern gully for me to not like it so i was just enjoying it yeah it was there for just after what he's saying there about the the man's the ground there's even that's a big flip and no no um gravity and all the people floating in the sky living on top of skyscrapers the fact that they made the story kind of grounded to the point where like it felt like this could really happen and this is what you would do mm. in this event and then all of a sudden has these giant bugs it was a bit yeah. too too far-fetched but again it's comic books you do look past it and just took a bit longer to look past this one but it did good yeah me too uh so much so i didn't even notice <laughs> Uh, Connie's here. Hi guys. I will watch the catch up. I went roller skating, so I didn't read along. That's no excuse. Yeah, we it's don't a really quick book to read. So, so just you could have read it while you were putting your skates on. To be honest, that's, <laughs> that's how quick this, this this read was, but a good one nevertheless. Um, okay, let's talk about story now. More of the writing side of things. Phil, do you want to kick us off there? Again, as as I said before, it just kind of it took a turn that you don't expect. You just assume yeah. volume two, you're going to continue on with the story. Mm-hmm. She's heading towards Kansas to solve the, the issue. But then, of course, you can't just have her arrive in Kansas because there's another volume to do. So you need to kind of beef yeah. out a bit. So they've added this new dynamic that, again, it it stretches what she's trying to do. You know, she yeah. obviously wants to save everybody. She doesn't want any, anyone to die. Yeah. You know, she, she seems to have not... Is it fair to call it a love interest? She definitely had a love interest at the start. And obviously realized that well, he's he's a bad one. I can't be having him. Yeah. So they it's all just, like just, the bad boys. Yeah, it's it just kind of stretched what she's obviously trying to do. And yeah. And all also the fact that she was with this guy. What was his name? I'm terrible with names. Edison. Edison. Um, and they're heading towards Kansas together. But now it's just her and Barrow. So it's their conflict. They're the ones going to mm. settle it. So I quite like the way they kind of crafted the story that way. That. You know they did rush it. They they had something different in, but it mattered. It doesn't. It, it, it makes sense, even though it's Jan bugs and whatever else. Yeah. But I still have to pay. You know, uh, give credit for the finer details. This is the stupid thing they written down. Whenever they were talking about wine, they said I have a bag of wine. I I know you can buy boxes of wine. You know now, I, but the fact that it's a bag of wine because of course you can't have a bottle of wine because gravity could just you know, float up hit the, hit the wall and break so have a bag just things like yeah. that I, I quite, plus I quite if you like... open the bottle it would just float out yes yeah you yeah. have to drink it like a capri sun don't you yeah you stick think, a straw think, in yeah. it and, and just drink and they, a bag of wine they did it's do that like, uh, it's got like a milk you know like a, a milk top from a glass milk bottle it's just got one of them on top you just pierce that one <laughs> but of course obviously like if, like, if, we, if we ever get the space one day um Maybe we'll live in Mars. That's how astronauts eat and drink, isn't it? Through bags. So, yeah, it's again, we details like that that you don't have to include. You could easily have them drinking a bottle of wine and you wouldn't you wouldn't really notice. You wouldn't really think about it. So, yeah, yeah that's like we find details that are included. Yeah, yeah, it is. And it's stuff that, you know, normal people wouldn't think of. You know, like, like I probably, it would have taken me a long time to pick up on the hair if they just drew hair just hanging down normally. You know, it would have taken me a while. Probably someone would have had to have pointed it out to me, <laughs> being like, "Why isn't their head floating? They're, they're, they're floating all the time anyway." And I'm like, "Oh shit!" Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it is amazing the the little details they are adding, and it just adds so much to this short fifteen issue story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't see. I don't think this is filler i i didn't get this feeling like i did last week with last week's book um mm. this did not feel like filler for me this felt like this was willa's acceptance arc she needed to come to terms with what her dad did at the end of the last story mm. you know she had to go from blaming it on someone to blaming it on herself to blaming it on no one and it not being someone's fault it being her dad's choice and it being an act of bravery and that was just that was amazing the way she grew in five issues how how do you do that to a character in just five issues this and is how you seem, do it and you know it didn't seem forced or rushed or no it was quite natural. not at all yeah absolutely she totally went from good. blaming bowen uh, bowen bowman bowen Bar- barrow barrow <laughs> 
<laughs> she went from blaming Barrow. So he, you know, he killed my dad. Um, yeah. He's the reason my dad's dead. I'm the reason my dad's dead. He died to save me. It's my fault to... No, he sacrificed himself to save me and you will not take that away from him. You don't get any of the credit. My dad was mm. a hero. It was just... Oh, goosebumps. It was really, yeah. really well done. Yeah, I loved it. Absolutely loved yeah. it. Yeah, I, I think I agree in terms of, you know, the last few books we've read, so Sequel Month, I think I've been a bit of a, a broken record when I've said... This this volume two is about character building and all this and like relationships and all this and you know th- this wasn't this wasn't that um, you know it still kind of held on to what we wanted to get out of volume one you know where we wanted that to go you know we still had Willa looking at the book that her dad gave her bringing up you know bringing back Barrow getting all these references and stuff like that and just slowly pushing the story forward in that kind of overarching sense whilst having this uh you know very singular story for this for these five issues you have this little mini arc inside this big arc and uh it was it was just done really well just seamless i think that's the word yeah yeah uh, if i have one down thing like if i had to ding this book on one thing and it's something that can totally be reconned, reconned in the next five issues it's the appearance of that character right at the end that you are forced to assume is her mother and then you're just like where has she been? Bad mother where has she been? Why wouldn't yeah. she be trying to get back to Willa? Why, you know, this? she's had plenty of time. 20 years like Yeah, what happened to her? I, I'm not okay with that. I think that should have probably been introduced in the next arc, so it didn't leave me on that sour note. Yeah. But like I say, it can be explained in the next five issues, and I could take that all back. Yeah, hopefully. Maybe it's not her mum, and we'll all no. just be like, oh my god, what the hell is this? Yeah. Maybe it's Barrow's mum. It's Sandra. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think, just... to be honest, I, I, didn't really like the char- I didn't like the character Edison. Um, I don't know why. I, I, I just feel like you knew he was sketchy. You knew he was going to double cross her somehow. I so, definitely thought he was he, he was too keen on knowing what she was up to, and she was trying to hold it back. You knew there, yeah. he was going to find out and going to double cross her, but not only did he double cross her so quickly, he double crossed the, the double cross really quickly as well. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Quadruple cross. Yeah, you, it's just it's just it no, was just easy for him. No, he didn't double cross her. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't do anything um out of character we know who he is from volume one he's the son of a rich kid uh, rich parents and you know he's spoiled brat and he's because he's joining her because she saved his life we know that but if you're someone who has if you would be immobile with gravity but because there's no gravity you get this yeah. freedom that you have and someone wants to take that away from you it doesn't matter who it is and it doesn't matter for what reason like it might be for the greater good of the world but your world would be completely changed and he will then be isolated to a chair for the rest of his life. I completely understand. If she had told him, like when he said, I would try, I would have tried to stop you. And she said, no, you wouldn't. Because if she had told him and explained to him everything, as hard as it would have been for him to explain, he would have gone along with her. But because she didn't tell him and he found out from the bad guy, yeah, that's why it hurt more and that's why he did what he did as well but also you can't expect someone to give up their freedom yeah but if you're going to be a bit more heroic but he's not the hero of the book willow is i know but i feel like i wanted him to be a bit more heroic i don't want willow is easily the star of the show and obviously she's the main character which is phenomenal she's brilliant but i just feel like he this was his chance and the writer's chance to make him a more noble, heroic, like someone who's willing to sacrifice the fact that he has this freedom now. He's willing to give that up for the greater good of the world. Um, because he, he he sees what's happening. Like all the animals are dead. They're feeding people bugs. People are risking their lives. They get these big bugs to eat. And also all along, the rich people who are his parents or he detests. He really hates his parents and his siblings. Like it's what I'm trying to say. He he was picking between the two. Yeah, and he's a flawed character, and that's what makes him interesting, is that he's not black and white. Because like you said, he betray- he he went straight back on it and told Willow what had happened, you know? So he's not straightforward. He's not just in it for himself. He understands how the world is, and he understands that it's affecting lots of people. 
but it's affecting him as well. But the, and the... people have learned to live in this new world, in cities and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes, they're eating bugs, <laughs> but they have learned to accept this new reality of the world. So why should he give up his freedom as a person, as an individual, to save the world? He, yeah. What has the world given him? He's been beaten and kidnapped and, you know, tortured and all these things in volume one. And now he's being attacked by giant bugs. But he must be thinking to himself, what would I do against a giant bug if I was in a wheelchair? But this is the point I'm making. He, he gave her up so quickly, but then he didn't have this point where he then seen, oh, I made a mistake. He didn't see anything. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like he, it was so quick. No. I understand he giving her up, down. but have more of a kind of bit in between. Just like, oh, I've done something wrong here because Willow's in, or Will is in danger or something. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, it was just think, too easy to switch around. No, but I think that's the, that's the... That, but that's that, and that's the human thing about it. You know, he's angry at Willow because she didn't tell him. He'd been asking and asking, "Why are we going to Kansas? What's so important there?" And she's like, "I can't mm. tell you. I can't tell you." This guy tells her, tells him, he's angry at Willow, so he's like, "Right, well, here's why she's going to Kansas." And then he then he calms down when he sees Willow again, and he's like, "I've made a mistake. I'm sorry. I told him. I gave him your book. I told him what we, you were going to do because you didn't tell me." That that's very very human. That's really good writing. If he had had this massive character arc and, oh, Willow, I'm so sorry, I didn't understand, that would have just been too dramatic and too boring and too predictable. This was just completely human. Made a mistake, owned up to it straight away. You know, I was angry, I did something impulsive, I'm sorry, let's fix it. Still don't like him. Terrible. <laughs> uh, it seems like Chris has a solution. He could accept any reality if he had a bag of water. <laughs> All you need, <laughs> and a straw. Happy. Yeah, give him a bag of wine and a straw. Um, <laughs> going back a little bit, uh, when we were talking about the, the differences between Volume One and Volume Two, uh, Martin was saying he was a bit confused at first, as it was a crazy change from from the first volume. But by the end of this one, he really appreciated the world building, and I think that that's all that is happening here, and it's just superb world building. You know, great choice of words there. Uh, yeah, absolutely loved it. Um, let me just see what has Liam said. Just like not every evil guy is going to look evil, not every romantic interest is going to be heroic, Philip. Uh, what they do really well in this book is write the characters as if they're real humans. And yeah, I think that resonates with what Shane has just said. Absolutely, 100%. Because Lucas makes perfect sense. You know, they worked on this farm, they've been told, like, you've just got to make do with what you've got and send us food and they're, they're losing people they're you know getting attacked regularly and for some reason like why doesn't he share the technology that keeps the bugs away from the cities with the farmers so they can at least keep the bugs yeah. away from the farm while they're processing the carcasses of what they have caught like, I feel like that's really really bad I think that's obviously to say about the working conditions of the working class man understandably and he you know lucas didn't mean to kill hundreds of thousands of people in the city he just wanted to show them how they were living yeah that was a mistake a big one yes he doesn't really own up to it and say like sorry he's kind of just like whoops i won't do that again it's like <laughs> that's kind of the wrong attitude to have after yeah. you kill an entire city full of people <laughs> But I enjoy the character of him, and he looks super badass at the end with all the scars from the glass that Willow throws oh, at him with her oh wings. God, that was awesome. That fight was it looks cool, so cool. It? Yeah, like, when she just flaps the wings and all the broken glass just goes straight towards him. Proper like Brilliant. anime vibes. I think Phil was talking about anime anime vibes last week. Um, yeah, that there was that was the moment for me in this book where she, you know she's wearing the wings and just flaps, and that's another fantastic um, bit of creative thinking from. Uh, Joe Henderson and, and Lee Garber, uh just you know, I wouldn't have thought of that. They're going in their heads are going, oh you know, this glass is floating around. If we just put a bit of wind behind that, this glass can go anywhere you want. And they did it in such a cool way and I was just so impressed. And again, it's all because all they've decided to do with this world is turn down the gravity a bit. And then all this cool stuff, this in this entire story that we're reading and really enjoying is all because they turned down gravity a bit. Um, yeah. Just hats off to the guy. Joe Henderson's, you know, I love this. Um, for anyone who has really enjoyed uh, this story or, you know, wants to look for more stuff by Joe Henderson, then give Shadecraft a look. 
Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's is that five issues, Phil? Oh, uh, five or six. I can't. I really yeah, only five, can't five or six. Five. Um, I want to say five. Um, so yeah. yeah, give that a look as well. I've read that and it's really cool. Um, totally different concept, but you can tell Joe Henderson has written it. Uh, really good. Go give it a look if you have enjoyed this. Um, yeah, Lucas's kind of development in this story was was cool again natural and seamless and it just kind of flowed and um to be honest you know at the start he seems so innocent and you don't really kind of call it and then at the end yeah he is just looking so badass and you just know instantly right this is the end villain like forget about barrow now like he's just a little cog in the whole thing like it's gonna be willa versus lucas at the end on his in his new I don't know where he got a new set of armor from on his magic massive butterfly coming for a fight and yes. it's just going to be awesome see this it's is some be... we've mentioned before like in loads of other books because sometimes the best villains are the ones that think they're doing the right thing the key yeah. thinks this is how to solve this problem and um, obviously the way they're being treated by Barrow and the, and the the uppers and all this kind of stuff like he thinks he's in the right by the people like the working class people, and that he even said the people only people who are going to die are people who are, uh, are the rich. You know, I think he said that, didn't he? Um, but so he thinks he's doing the right thing by himself, but he's really not. And yeah, I mean, you mentioned there, Scott. Like you didn't really, you couldn't suss him out at the start. You thought he was a nice guy, and then there's a few hints that he wouldn't be, and then a few hints that he would be again, and then all of a sudden he's just a bit of a douche. Yeah. And uh, yeah. The, the the niggle kind of starts when he mentions Kansas as well. Yeah. And then she's like, what do oh, you mean? Me. What do you mean? And then that's where it kind of starts for me, like my thinking. Okay. For me, it started back when you first meet him. And um, I can't remember the girl's name. Serena. Serena yeah. says, we can't take them back to the farm. What if they find out? Yeah. And it's yeah. like... What if we find out what what are they doing? I was like, well, you know, what, what if they find out they've just been eating bugs the whole time? That, that's what she. Yeah, meant. but we, but we didn't know. Like it was just that, and it was like, oh, that's all you need. That is all you need. Yeah. That gave me like the governor vibe from um, the Walking mm. Dead. You know, because he's a good guy. We think he's a good guy, just in charge of this town. And yeah, I just I loved it though because he did. He was like. Um, I'm going to fix the world. It starts in Kansas. So she thinks, yeah, he knows how to turn the gravity back on. But by the end of the book, she says to him, you don't want to save the world. You want the world for yourself. And he's like, don't I deserve it? And it's like, oh, mm -hmm. too far. No, yeah, no, no, no. no. So do you still fancy that... him now then? Or... Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even more so now? Is it... Yeah, he'd probably just be a one and done now, though. Can't, can't be dating a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> Wham bam, thank you, man. It just shows it just shows the writing though, like to turn a character that you at first think is gonna be this great hero into what's gonna be a great villain. Although the way this book goes, I would not be surprised if we don't see him in the next four issues. It's Willa dealing with who she's dealing with. In the final issue, she turns gravity on just as they get into the town and they just fall out of the sky and die. <laughs> like that that would be like this amazing twist that we're thinking he's this big bad guy and he's just not a threat at all because by the time he gets there gravity's back on bugs can't fly and the whole all, all the farmers just die yeah that's a good point actually because if she turns the gravity back on like even her friends who live in the skyscrapers high up they're gonna are fall. they they're gonna fall yeah yeah, mm. like hopefully she can get a message out first. Hopefully it's like a text alert, like you've got ten minutes. Gravity's coming back. Grab onto something. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, um, I'm trying to think. Um, I quite enjoyed. This is just a really small part of the story, but I quite enjoyed. There's a little flashback where you see Willa as as a kid, and you know her dad is teaching her about puzzles. Mm -hmm. or maths or something like that but he you can see he's kind of bolted on into this harness uh and willa's just floating around and and i know that you know her dad was part of the reason why um why gravity is gone uh but it just shows the difference with how uncomfortable he is with it you know wanting to be harnessed in and then willa is just happily floating around flying around just having a good time uh 
and yeah it was only it wasn't even like a full page it was like three quarters of a page long this this whole flashback but i thought it was really cool just to show you know she was born in this world and that's all she knows and and he wasn't you know he was you know middle uh, you know halfway through uh, his current life and uh yeah he was totally uncomfortable with it because that's the thing even if you recall from the first volume whenever the mum floated out of the house the dad didn't go he didn't try to kind of save her he kind of was too fearful and obviously yeah. that's why he kind of lived his life and uh, like a hermit almost kind of yeah. way because because of that he couldn't live with the guilt and obviously now we've gone full circle now because the mother we assume is is really there so how does he survive that and why does she not come back but yeah like, like the idea that willa is completely used and confident and comfortable um in this world even towards the end when she's heading towards kansas and she's on land she's no fire extinguisher she's no weapon she's nothing to keep her grounded as such but she knows how to leap so she's done, done the big leaps to get to kansas like she's comfortable doing it she's not all her choice she says as well of course but she's just comfortable to do it and uh, yeah it's really cool yeah uh lee has brought on uh a nice point too. He says, "Surely those bugs will go extinct if gravity turns back on." I can kind of get behind them evolving to deal with going from having gravity to no gravity, but surely the reverse would be near impossible. Oh yeah, because I mean, as soon as gravity comes on, they won't be able to fly anymore. They'll just they'll get just, squashed. They'll just get pinned to the ground and die, and they won't be able to reproduce, will they? How? How? That's, that's, that's very confused. Like because of their body mass, they their wings are won't be able to lift them. Ah, uh, okay. It's I, like I, if there was I, a giant I, bumblebee and you just yes. turn gravity back on. That this is I was yeah I was confused. You're right because I was thinking well they can fly now in real life with gravity. <laughs> but then if it's, suppose they're you're like right, this big. Yeah, their, their <laughs> bodies are so big and their wings haven't needed to carry their weight. Yes, I get it now. Mm. Thanks for thanks for that. So where do you think this story is going to go? Like, what is each of your opinions? So we had um, all of them now are trying to get to Kansas. So uh, Edison is, he's gone on a dragonfly. He's flying on a dragonfly. Uh, Barrow is on a jetpack. And Willow has decided um, because... Edison's nothing... not going to Kansas. Edison's going back to the city to warn them. I just remembered, right. yeah. Yes, you are right. Um, but yeah, but now... Willa has turned on her magnet boots because she's in like the middle of nowhere and there's nothing to grab onto, so she has to kind of super jump her way. Did she turn across. her ma- grab? I don't think the desert has magnets. I don't think they cover well, the, the entire has planet a, in magnets. Has a magnetic Pool. field, doesn't it? Like, but that's not what that's not what the gravity boots stick to. They stick to the concrete. They stick to the metallic concrete that was. Well, either way, he, she's turn, not he can turn them away. On. It's because she's closer to the ground, so gravity is stronger the further down you are. Yeah, that's, that's what I took it from. Like, like, say if you're on right, on the moon, right. for example, you're kind of instead of walking, you have to like leap. You know. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Took... My mistake. Uh, so yeah, but she is kind of super jumping her way towards Kansas. So, and then you see the the character that we think is her mum, uh, being like you know saying whatever she said. Uh, you know, Willa, there you are, my love, whatever. Uh, so where do you think now this story is going to go? Before final thoughts, I I know, so I'll I'll set this one out. Okay, fair enough. Okay. I think Willa's going to get to Kansas. She's going to find whatever device her dad was working on, um, the prototype version, because obviously the real one was taken by um, Bowen. Barrow. What do I keep? Barrow. Why Barrow? Why do I keep calling him Bowman? <laughs> because he's not a handsome man, like you know. Yeah, I don't pay attention to him. Yeah, <laughs> he's not Lucas. I didn't memorize his name. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think she's going to find a prototype that the dad was working on, probably at some university that he probably went to when he was younger. She's going to question turning it on or she's going to be about to turn it on. Bowen's going to show up and then so is Lucas. And she's going to have to keep it turned on so she can deal with Lucas and then turn it off afterwards. That's what I think. Once she's dealt with Lucas and saved the city, I think then she she will turn it on. But I do hope the book ends before we see gravity come back on i just want it to end with her flicking the switch i don't want to see gravity come back on it don't ruin it just her flick Uh, the switch and that's it just end it there because it started with gravity turned off it should end with gravity turned on there should be no more pages after that 
Right. We didn't get a picture of the world with gravity. I don't want a picture of the world with gravity again. The yeah. book is about no gravity. That's true. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Uh, I think, yeah, I, I think she will get to, to what she needs. Uh, I, I think we'll see more of the the book. Uh, you know, she'll get the book off Barrow. Um, we'll see, like, her figuring stuff out, you know, the puzzles falling into place and things like that. And uh, I think there's this there's going to be this gigantic machine uh, that's, that's controlling the whole gravity thing. And uh, when it gets turned back on, I'm hoping... Lucas is involved in that machine and he gets destroyed inside it or alongside it or something like that. That's what I'm hoping for. Uh, but yeah, like I, I didn't actually think how I wanted the end end to be. But what you're saying, Shane, I think I agree with. I, I don't want to have like half an issue of just people, I don't know, pop into the shops. just Staggering around bit. trying to focus, yeah, trying to walk like, again with gravity. Like in a, in a sad kind of way, I kind of... I don't know. I want to see the the reality for Edison, just him. <laughs> like, but like you know, like all of this, it's not going to be great for everyone. Like, it's necessary the gravity is turned back on, but you know, she thinks that she'll be saving the world, but like you said, not his world. You know, some people will be left more worse off uh, in this. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I think. That's what I think. That's what I hope for anyway. Would you be okay if gravity was still turned off at the end of the book? If it well, turned like, out there was no machine, they only they 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 turned they made the machine to turn gravity off, but it doesn't work both ways, and it's just on it's off forever. Would you be satisfied if Willow was just just went back to her city? At least uh, I think at least they tried, but then that would make me think why why would the dad go on so much that he's found found the fix for it well i mean you if know? he knew it was in kansas why didn't he go to kansas 20 years ago because he wouldn't leave his house <laughs> <laughs> that's why <laughs> Fair um, yeah so i'm glad that phil is putting on his poker face and not revealing uh to either of us if either of us are close or far or whatever yeah. so I'm, I'm glad of that to be fair um, i do know what high it ends but i still can't remember everything so um i it's not poker face i just i'm just i'm just that dumb yeah Sorry. fair enough all right um do you guys have anything else to talk about or do you want to go and do final thoughts i'm good Final thoughts, that is. Final thoughts. All right, cool. Guys, uh, for everyone who has read it uh, in the chat, do give us your score. We'll add it to yours. Uh, we've also got the score from when we read Volume 1, so we'll be giving you an average of the story overall so far. Uh, so let's see if that changes or not. Okay. Uh, Shane, what did you think? Okay, this is going to be quick because I've said everything that i loved about this book i love the art i love the world i love the characters the flawed ones you know that just the writing that feels natural in an unnatural world is it's just done so well how can you not enjoy mm. this um the character of willow is now one of my favorite characters in comic books you know like i i, I absolutely adore her that she can grow so much in five issues I felt for her, like I said, I got goosebumps at the end when she told it, when she told, when she said, like, my dad sacrificed himself and you don't get any credit for that. And I thought that was just such a powerful line for her to say to him as she's saving his life. You know, this guy she wants dead, I thought was great. I love this. Um, and I, I think I'm going to love volume three as well. And I think if we cover it on here, it might score higher. So I can't give this, this, this isn't a perfect 10. But so, book three might be, but who knows? If we get to do a three calls month, maybe we'll cover it then. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, um, I'm going to give this a nine. I absolutely nine. adored this nice. book. So yeah, last for volume one, you gave it an eight. So I just reflect but, well on how much it's yeah. This just yeah, the story's just going up for me. So yeah, book three is probably going to be a ten. <laughs> nice, nine point five or ten. Awesome. <laughs> Uh, brilliant, thank you. Uh, Phil? Huh, right, okay. 
basically, I'm torn if I like the first volume or this one better. The first one obviously introduced to this kind of world, and we mentioned before it, it, it was a fairly simple story. Volume two definitely branched out more, so you're getting a lot more world building, a lot more details, and there's no question like. Like Willa is the star of the show. Like I think, same machine. I think she's great, and it almost makes me feel sad that this is three volumes, one and done type of thing. That's it. Like there's no more Willa. I feel like if this was Marvel, it'd be the, or DC, it'd be the perfect character. They'd probably ruin, ruin her to be fair, but it'd be the perfect character to hold on to and, and follow. You know, but it's not obviously. And I, I remember that the time the whole bug thing kind of irked me a little bit. Thinking this is this is odd. Where's this going? But it, it, it makes sense, obviously, throughout the whole story. Um, again, it's very much for me character driven, and that Will is great. Edison still are still question marks for me over him. And hmm, yeah, I, I, the villain could be a bit more villainous, I suppose. <laughs> and Lucas, to be fair, I am a bit confused by him in terms of is he or isn't he? In terms of is he is he gonna like? being asked the rest of the story or not in this because again you don't know he, he seemed good and then obviously turned completely jackassy but to be fair I'm, I'm rambling on so I'm trying to fill this out but I'm, I'm going to stay where I where I was from volume 1 to be consistent with that so I scored a, that an 8, this yeah. is still an 8 it's hard to know which is better volume both have pros and cons for different things so I'm sticking mm-hmm. with an 8 Nice, fair enough nice one, thank you very much uh, we've got two scores so far. I'm sure we'll have a couple more coming in. Oh, uh, yeah, just another one there. So uh, Liam has said, I gave volume one a 6.5. And as I've said, I do prefer this book. Uh, I like the ridiculousness of the giant bugs. I enjoy the writing more and the art is still consistent with volume one. 7.5 from me. Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, Triple G has just left it nice and clean. 6.5. Hi, Pete as well. Hope you're doing all right. Uh, so yeah, 6.5 from Pete. Uh, Chris has said, for me, it was the weakest volume as it went back on the grounded reality uh, it created in Volume 1, and I've seen big bugs many, many times in comics. Uh, Three brings it back, but a 6.5 for me, as I enjoyed. Great. Thank you very much, Chris. And Martin, I loved this. The art and story was great. I enjoyed it that much. I read all of it. I'm joining Shane. It's a 9 from me. Nice. Brilliant. So thank you very much for all of your scores there. I'll sort that out in a sec. Uh, for me, um, it's, it's really hard to not say stuff that you guys have already said. Um, I resonate totally with, with all of it. Um, the world building for me was probably my favourite aspect. Um, just again, like I've said, all they've done is turned down gravity and now we've got this entire new world and all these concepts and theories and fun things to play with just because things are floating a bit. Um, but I think I think it's fantastic. Uh, and Willa, badass character. She was great in Volume One, and just think, just even better now. And we we've learned more about her. We're a bit more in depth into her personality and uh, the emotional side of things. And she's just a cool character. And everyone else we've met as well, so human. There's nothing is over the top or underwhelming. It is just natural and again seamless and just human. And it's brilliant. Uh, the art. Very consistent, awesome. Um, we get some panels with you know some just bland background, but a lot of it is just amazing, and the splash pages we get are stunning. Uh, all of it's brilliant. Um, really enjoyed this. It's definitely an improvement from Volume One, in my opinion. Um, I give it a seven, um, and uh, I I I have wiggled on my score this time. Um, I just originally I decided to give it a whole point more, but I'm going for a point and a half more. So for me, it's eight point five uh, for this story. Nice. So yeah, so really, um, yeah, really enjoyed it. Uh, okay, let me just do some quick maths. And okay, we got the scores. So with you guys in the audience, we had uh, a seven point five from Liam, six point five from Pete and Chris, and a nine from Martin. That gave you an average of 7.4. Now, adding that onto Phil's 8, Shane's 9, and my 8.5, we get uh, the average of 8.2. <gasps> 
top ladies, ten, ladies and gentlemen, and it made it into the top ten. Let's knocked see. off the cosmic ghost rider. No way. Let's see where it comes. <laughs> there it is. So it's knocking off cosmic ghost rider. Sorry, Phil, and it's bumping the kill lock and chew down a bit as well, and it is joining the Ultimates Volume One in sixth place on our leaderboard. That explains um, Scott's wiggle, wiggle room. Well, next up, point five will knock off the Cosmic Ghost Rider. He's, he's playing funny buggers now, Scott. And uh, let's go ahead and show you the rest of the leaderboard as well. There we go. Awesome. And there we go. So there it is. Uh, I will tell you as well the average of the story so far. So uh, volume one, we give it a 7.5. Uh, this time it's got an 8.2. 8 so this gets an average, volume one and two together, of 7.9. Nice. That's what we have so far. So that's brilliant. So hopefully volume three will bump it up, but we'll have to see if it ever gets picked again. Uh, that's it. We've finished our discussion on Skyward Volume 2. Here there be butterflies. Um, or dragonflies, sorry. Here there be dragonflies. Um and before we tell you what's coming up next week, I just want to let you guys know that we are obviously going to be cho choosing for Herd's Choice uh, next week's episode, so do get your thinking caps on. Do we? I'm sure we want to keep it a sequels month. If, if possible, it would be nice, yeah. wouldn't it, to if, finish yeah. the wave on a sequel as well? Take a look at the stuff we've done in the past, see if there's anything on there that you would like to see us talk about a sequel of it and uh, get it down. But you don't have to, there's no pressure but it'd be really cool if we could keep it as a sequel. Um, but without further ado, we will show you what we've got coming up next week for Philip's pick of sequels month. So, Philip, tell the listeners what we're going to be reading next week. So, next week, following on from Planet Hulk, we are reading World War Hulk. Yes. Looking forward to it. Going to be great. Uh, if anyone did read along with us for uh, <laughs> for World War uh, for Planet Hulk, Planet Hulk. Uh, then uh, I'm sure you'll love that we're going to be carrying on this story. But that's it. So, do make sure to join us for next week, and don't forget to have a think what you would like to choose for Herd's Choice. And uh, all we got to do now is uh, bid you farewell and uh, wave goodbye. See you, everyone. Thank you for joining. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> <laughs>